Good morning. It's turned out nice again. Mother, how's it going, guys? You all right? Yes, match day. Are you looking forward to it? I'm looking forward to it. I don't like this competition. I don't think any of us do. Uh, but we are in it, and I want to make it ours. And I think that when the game gets underway, each and every one of us will be like, come on, you know, you know what I mean? So let's just see. Um, but what I want to talk to you about is uh, a potential Mo Salah, or Mo Salah, as Fabrizio Romano would shout and bawl and scream about uh, Mo Salah, a potential uh, replacement for Mo Salah, who is going to go to the Saudi Pro League at some point. Don't be scared, mongering. Um... So we are going to look at, you know, we are looking at, you know, potential links in the news. And like I said to you, before the uh, the transfer window closed and the Saudi uh, transfer window closed, I said to you, you know, like, obviously, if he stays at Liverpool, we're going to be subjected to a lot of speculation all season. So we're going to see these different suggestions probably every day of the week between now uh, and, and whenever he leaves. And I'm sure that as January uh, approaches, uh, the speculation will probably int intensify from late November, uh, you know, the usual uh, stuff that we're subjected to and we'll be wondering if he might leave in, in January or will it be the end of the season? Oh, we're going to have to go through it all. And that's I'm, and I'm all right with that because at the end of the day, we've got another season out of him. At least, who's you know, who, who knows? He might stay, right? I don't think he will, but you never know. Um, so we're looking at, you know, the, the, the media are linking us with potential replacements all the time. Now, here in Spain... Uh, Real Madrid's Rodrigo has been mooted as a potential replacement for Salah because they're saying uh, over here that the 22-year-old would be available, not could be available, would be available if the Spaniards sign Kylian Mbappe. No, nah, it's not going to happen, is it, guys? Because Mbappe's coming to Liverpool, obviously, right? Wrong. OK, so if the Spaniards sign Kylian Mbappe to play alongside Vinicius Jr., and the Reds would go all in to make the statement signing, apparently, if you believe that. Um, now, if we take a look at his uh, contractual information, according to TransferMarket.com, he's under contract until 2025, which initially I thought, ooh, that's not too bad. But I don't think that's correct, um, because there were reports last year that he'd signed a new deal until 2028. I don't know if any of you guys can clarify that. Uh, I'm not going to waste too much time, you know, digging into that, whatever, because at the end of the day, this is just a speculative link, which has probably got nothing in it. But this is what's being claimed uh, in Spain. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, but Dunk, listen, mate, what we'll do is we'll trigger his release clause. No, we won't, because his release clause is said to be a thousand million euros. <laughs> Oh, my dear, a thousand million, a billion euros, a billion euros, as he, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, as he extended on his last deal. That's what it says here. A billion, a billion, a billion. I'd be happy with a thousand euros right now. I don't know about you. Like, I'd be happy with 100 euros. It's a day out, isn't it? Well, maybe not a day. It depends where you live. Right, anyway, so let's look at, if, if, uh, oh, oops, Daisy. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, any information we can provide you regarding the Brazilian? I know you obviously know who he is. Um, he's uh, he's got a kit deal with uh, Nike. There you go. There's the obvious connection, guys. It's going to happen in it. Now it says here his main position uh, is on the right. You no, know, as a right winger, but he can also play on the left side as well, and also a centre forward. So he's very versatile. The transfer market have got his uh, valuation down at 100 million euros, but. You know, I don't really ever pay any attention to those kind of things because about you know, the value of a player is based on uh, what that club says at the time and what's happening at that time. You know, like um, if Liverpool are urge, you know, are urgently trying to sign a, a replacement, if you like, for Mo Salah, then a club that's got a player is going to try and get more money because they know you're desperate, right? If other clubs are interested. Uh, that pushes up the price. You know, Liverpool don't usually get involved in bidding wars and things like that. But, you know, you might turn around and say, well, we're not going to pay 100 million euros for a play. But then you look at what we, you know, we bid for Casado. Although some people think that was just like a big like PR thing. It was never real. It was strange. Um, but we've gone over that a million times before. So I don't I don't know what you think about this. Like uh, uh, the, my, my thoughts about uh, a potential replacement for Mo Salah is you would imagine 
just through common sense, really, that Liverpool would be looking and exploring, you know, a high profile, maybe not that high profile as Rodrigo, but, you know, players of uh, quality that have got the stats that are maybe, uh, that maybe have uh, realistic release clauses. So you've got to be honest, if you were, the, you know, the director of football at Liverpool right now, what would you be doing? I'd be going, right, find me uh, the nearest thing to Mo Salah. Uh, across the world or whatever, and and try and find me someone with a release clause. You know, like what are those release clauses coming in? Because as you know, we did well with that in the summer. And the reason that I think that release clauses are important in this instance is because if more is sold, then obviously people are going to know we're flush with money and they're going to try it on big time. And that could be the biggest problem we have uh, going through our next couple of transfer windows if we do get the most salad money, right? You know, like big money. Uh, even if you're not signing, you know, like even if you're going for a defender, clubs will be thinking, well, they've got money, aren't they, right now? So let's play hard to get. So it could be a frustrating couple of windows for us guys as supporters. I, I do think that. Um, but I think, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just like, maybe I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm not stating the obvious. I, I just do think that if you were the Liverpool director of football now, you'd be looking for the players with the best stats. Well, that's nothing new, right? But you're going to be looking at saying, right, who's, you know, who can I get on contract release clauses trigger you know 70 million 60 million 50 whatever the price but away from that 100 million bracket maybe even a release clause of 100 million i wish this information was widely available widely available to us i know there are um uh there are websites there is a i can't remember the company there's a company i remember it many years ago it's so expensive to get access to this particular database so you know like we can go to transfer market uh, you know, look at a player's contracts and stuff. You can go on this. It's like a, a a network for football clubs where they can sign in and they can basically get as much information as they want. But and I looked at getting one of those memberships, but and it was easily over ten years ago. Uh, and it was you were talking thousands. It was like for the total, you know, like pros. You know what I mean? So um, we won't be doing that anytime soon. But you know, good sporting directors, people with a good network. Um, of contacts can find this information out, you know, without having to uh, maybe, you know, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I'm going all over the place with the video. Uh, but what I mean is, maybe if you've got a, a play with a contract release clause, then you don't want other clubs to know about it, do you? So you've got to you've got to do your own work. You've got to find out who those players are. So if I was a sporting director of Liverpool, my team of assistants, I'd be going right, get out there, find me. Uh, a, a new Mo Salah if that's possible but try and find me one with a contract release clause because otherwise we're going to get skanked uh, and it's going to be impossible um, so he's, uh, Rodrigo he's been capped 16 times uh, by Brazil uh, he's 22 years of age he'll be 23 uh, in January when we turn into the new window uh, and as you know he's a right winger forward but can play on the left uh, started his career uh, at Santos went on to Real Madrid um, and he's, he's, he's played for Brazil right through the different levels and the seniors, of course. Um, his father, uh, Eric, Eric, Eric always reminds me of Banana Man, Eric. Am I too old? It doesn't matter. Uh, he's a former professional footballer who played as a right back in several tiers of Brazilian football, the highest of which being the Serie B. Um, now, Rodrigo's got stacks of uh, honours, you know, in La Liga, Copa del Rey, Super Copa de España, Champions League, UEFA Super Cup, FIFA Club World Cup, uh, and various other individual performances as well. A very good player. Um, unfortunately, I think that, you know, these, these reports uh, are very weak at the moment. You know, some of the players, uh, we mentioned that kid yesterday. I think we're going to see this all the time, you know. And I think it's easy for the journalists to say, oh, Liverpool will be interested in him. You know, um, we can all go out there and, and pick the easy names as possible replacements. But we know that the more easier it is to pick a potential replacement or a name, um, the more expensive it is because that player is more well known or uh, more established. So we really need to be looking at players that uh, are maybe... A little bit under the radar, but so, but how do you find a Mo Salah, a new Mo Salah, if you like, that's under the radar that no one's heard of? Because if he's that good, then he's going to be out there. 
So I think it's a, it's a tricky period for Liverpool Football Club with this one, guys. And sometimes it does make you wonder, you know, sometimes you can sell a, a fantastic, as Brendan Rodgers would say, a fantastic player and maybe not get like for like again and maybe you adjust it and maybe another player becomes the star man, you know, and you readjust the team. Uh, quite a few of you have said in the comments you think that might happen. But under all of these videos that we're going to do about Mo Salah this, this, this season, uh, please pay attention to the comments. And if you watch this video earlier on, early on when it's gone live, maybe revisit it a couple of days later because the comments can be very interesting because I'm seeing the guys, uh, when I say guys, I mean boys and girls, I'm seeing the guys, uh, you know, putting forward suggestions of some players. Some of these names I don't even know, but it's really interesting. You know, look at the comments, get on YouTube. I know YouTube uh, can, can make anyone look amazing. Uh, but what I mean is, like, just do a little bit of research and that. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, 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 I might be wrong with this one, one moment, please. Um, the Liverpool Echo touched on this today, uh, Rodrigo, which does, that doesn't mean anything. Um, but what does mean something, uh, please, I have a terrible tablet, it's so old now. Um... Yeah, they, they, they ran a, a thing today saying Reds, Reds to Rodrigo all in. Um, and they concluded that their final sentence was a good signing, question mark. We will be bringing you some extra bits of facts and statistics throughout the day to help come to a conclusion. And I always find that interesting with the Liverpool Echo, as much as I don't pay much attention to them now in terms of them finding their own... Uh, credible news I do use the echo to uh, you know like uh, like things like this you know they, they do a lot of like this has been linked that's been linked this has been mentioned um, there is a bit of bias in there as well though with them and what I mean by that is they'll only pick out sometimes people at the pally with and stuff like that um, but when they single out players and they're saying they're going to bring something. You know, they're going to they're going to do an article on on Rodrigo Rodrigo today. I always think, all oh, right, okay. Well, what have they heard that's making? Why why give them a bit more attention than the other six, seven, eight players that they want to get clicks for? Do you know what I mean? So it's certainly one to uh, listen. You know, to uh, speculation over the over the summer uh, season. Sorry, uh, and yeah, these you're going to be seeing a few of these videos. I think because this is obviously. Uh, a big talking point and you know there are there are many things as we look forward to this new Liverpool side if you like um, you know I remember it wasn't so long ago that we we're talking about you know who who's going to replace Suarez and Sturridge uh, you know and Liverpool will you know that it will the, the club the club hey, hey for sure it's a, I didn't sound like Rafa did it Rafa as Tom Hicks was saying I need some new impressions um we, we will, you know, advance, but we have to think about life after Mo Salah. Uh, you know, Mane is gone. I miss Mane. You know, uh, Wijnaldum. You know, these are players that I think that we still miss. But at the moment, we have this exciting blend of new talent uh, that I think, I don't know, I've gone into this new season way more upbeat than I felt I was going to during the summer because the summer set, it seemed like the worst transfer window uh, in, in all the time that I've done Cop Talk, summer window, every summer window I'm quitting Cop Talk, you know what I mean? Like, because the debates get so stupid, people are arguing. Every single summer window since the 90s, I've gone, I'm not doing it anymore, that's it, I'm sick of it, can't be doing with this shit. This year was even worse. I didn't just want to quit Cop Talk this summer, I wanted to quit life. It was terrible on here. You know, people are really mean and nasty to each other, just going mental, you know, and, uh, but at the moment, I feel I feel very positive. I posted about this yesterday on, on the the Cop Talk VIP members website. I'd love you to come on there. That's the best way of supporting me in the video uh, description. There'll be a link there, I assume. There must be. Um, obviously, you can support the channel by joining the channel. That's a massive help. But if you want to go all in, uh, that's where I spend all my day and night, really. Uh, day, days and nights. And I was on there yesterday saying to people, you know, I'm really, like, upbeat at the moment. And it makes a refreshing change. And it was interesting, one of the members on there, Naveed, I just read his comment this morning, he says, we've been around this place a long time, Dung, and, and he said, I, I know what you like. You know, when you go quiet, uh, you know, because I haven't been contributing much on there recently and during the summer, 
Um, you know, it's because I know that you run down with it and it's good to see you posting again because I've got that bit of enthusiasm back. And I would urge all of you to um, try and be a bit more positive. Um, and you know, one way, of, one way of doing that is avoiding that shite there, Twitter, Twitter, because the football community on there is absolutely toxic uh, and very misleading and it's going to get worse on there for reasons I've already spoken about before. If you enjoy social media and you want to talk to the Liverpool fans, we've got our own Mastodon server. And Mastodon is not a strap-on, it does sound like one, uh, but Mastodon is a Twitter rival. And there's many of these servers all around the world and they're all connected to each other. I created one called liverpoolfootballclub.social. And if you go to liverpoolfootballclub.social on your browser, you can join there and you can follow people. There's lots of Liverpool fans on there, obviously. But myself at Dunk, for example, at Cop Talk. And if you were to follow me, and then you know you'd start to see uh, there's just different ways that you can interact with people without going on Twitter. I got I got uh, banned from Twitter on my personal account uh, for sticking up for a single mum on there. It's a long story. One tweet that I put out. She was trying to get a kid to hospital, young kid, and then just stop oil protesters wouldn't let her through. And I was like, well, I'd get her through, and I got banned for that. So as a result, I don't spend my life on Twitter anymore. I monitor it for, monitor it for you guys. Um, but I tell you what, guys, I feel a lot better for it. And, and, and certainly, um, you know, better up here and not, I'm not getting engaged. There's, there's certain people on Twitter that are FSG out, uh, that are top reds or whatever you want to call them, constantly, constantly arguing with each other. And it, it's just, it's, it's, I don't like it. You know what I mean? I don't like it. It, it goes against what you never walk alone means to me. Because we should all be allowed our opinions without having to threaten each other and get into big petty arguments. So for me, being away from that is the best thing that's ever happened to me mentally, I swear down. Um, but we are, we are on Mastodon, LiverpoolFootballClub.social if you want to join us. There's lot, plenty of uh, uh, football discussion on there. There's uh, no advertising, there's no algorithms, no toxicity, no fucking transfer, ITK, numpties or anything. So it's very good. Anyway, this video is not about that. I'm trying to say, like, I'm enjoying being positive and uh, long may it continue. I do know that it can uh, change at any moment. You know, I, I know that. Um, but the summer was a, a big drain on all of us, I think, starting you know, with the Bellingham stuff. And then just, you know, it's just, it, was, it was a very difficult summer. But I'm positive. And, it, you know, how can you find positivity in more Salah leaving? Well, because... We've got another year out of him, you know, we know, we can, we can prepare for it. You know, it hasn't just happened. We know it's going to happen. And uh, never say never in football, you know, anything could happen next year, but I suspect that he will go. Uh, and uh, according to people that I know, Liverpool are actively uh, looking for, uh, you know, replacements or certainly new additions to the squad uh, that will help us. So rather than being depressed with it and, and pulling our air out with it, Let's see if we collectively can come up with suggestions. So always come back to the comments a couple of days after a video and just see what people have said. Because I tell you what, guys, there's some very, very, very intelligent switched on football people in the comments of this, of this, of this channel. Far, far more intelligent uh, than I. All right. So uh, that's all I want to say on that front. I would keep an eye on this player personally. I'd keep an eye on him. Uh, and, and numerous other players and, and I'm going to keep making videos about it so um, I don't think we'll be paying his release clause and I'm not sure Liverpool would be paying upwards of 100 million but if they bid for Casado well you know they might bid for, for I don't know you, you never know do you you never know so I'm already excited about next year believe it or not and normally I'd be going yeah but then FSG you know, I, I, and that's the kind of discussions I want to avoid Okay, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm trying to think if we've got anything on the agenda today. I'll, I'll, I'll probably try and do a Cop Talk podcast today. Um, if you, we'll, do, we'll be doing Saturday night steaming, streaming. We will be doing Saturday night steaming, streaming this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. UK time. Um, so I would love to see you then if you're available. Uh, please come along. We'll have a laugh and a giggle. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please thumbs up. Uh, please leave a comment. That's the most important thing you can do because your comments are exceptionally important to me. And I, can't, I can't explain why. I just like to read what everyone's thoughts are. Um, I love the comments. I really do. Even if it's just a sentence, it doesn't matter. You have to, you know, I know you haven't got time to do all that. 
Um, and if you really like the video or want to support the channel, you can give it, a, uh, what's it called? A super thanks. That's lovely. That's like buying me a drink. Or become a supporter or a member of the channel. Or become a top VIP member uh, and, um, and help the big man out. So that'd be appreciated. But more importantly, it costs you nothing to thumbs up a video uh, and to, uh, to leave me a comment. I hope I can come back and make some more videos for you today. I don't want to just talk about idle speculation. Um, but I think that we might have to do that a little bit this this season. Uh, because I don't think there's much to talk about at the moment. All right, guys. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll be back again with you today. Please enjoy the game. And um, I suspect I will record a video full time anyway just to get your thoughts on the game. All right, guys. Speak to you in a bit.